reliable communication is not only important, it's absolutely critical for effective warfighting today. Reliable communication is the backbone of today's military. Without it, the lives of our soldiers are at risk. And just like mobile communication users worldwide, the U.S. military depends on targeted communication on the go. Born from the need for stable, 24-7 ship-to-shore communication that could be successful regardless of environmental and geographical conditions, the Navy is assigned the responsibility to provide this vast capability known today as narrowband satellite communication. The role of narrowband communications in the overall military SATCOM architecture is really to give uh, communications capability to the tactical user. For me, it's critical as a communications officer, but for the warfighter, it's even more critical because it's their, it's their lifeline. Similar to commercial cellular technology, narrowband, also known as ultra-high frequency or UHF, provides users with terminals that are small and portable enough to be carried deep into theaters of operation, enabling command and control on the move and providing a true joint tactical picture. UHF SATCOM is used a lot like uh, the old party line. It's essentially one person talk and many people can listen. Beyond providing continuous communication to all four branches of the U.S. military and many of their allies, space-based narrowband capability also ensures reliable worldwide coverage for national emergency assistance, disaster response, and humanitarian relief. Narrowband is used by multiple agencies. It's used from those in the White House. It's used by all the military agencies. It's used by those working Border Patrol. And the reason why is it is tactical. It can be used in any type of weather, and it can be used in any kind of urban environment. Responsibility to supply this critical capability falls to PMW-146, the Navy's San Diego, California-based satellite communications office. Under the command of the Program Executive Office for Space Systems, PMW-146 carries out the day-to-day -day execution of the Department of Defense's narrowband portfolio. PMW-146 consists of about 35 people providing a system that costs roughly $6 billion. We are developing MUOS as the future system. We're maintaining UFO, or UHF, follow-on system, which is the primary constellation uh, of satellites uh, that we use for narrowband SATCOM right now. Protecting the warfighter through reliable communication has always been paramount. Current and future efforts rely on the foundation laid by early space systems such as Vanguard and Marisat. The Navy's been in space for quite a long time, since the mid-1960s. So since that time, they've, they've had the lead role within the Department of Defense for, for providing beyond line of sight capability for all the warfighters, regardless of service. The Navy acquired that role because of its uh, early need to communicate with ships at sea. Launched from 1993 to 2003, the eight-satellite UHF follow-on constellation is on orbit, servicing the global needs of U.S. and Allied forces. Today, the capability is provided by the UHF follow-on satellites, as well as lease services on LeaseSat, Skynet, and other uh, satellites that we have uh, arrangements with around the world. In addition to managing the current fleet, the PMW-146 team is also dedicated to efficiently developing the next generation mobile user objective system, or MUOS, satellite constellation. MUOS uh, top requirements uh, have to do with capacity and coverage and link availability. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, providing uh, global coverage. The ability for a warfighter to make a telephone call over a MUOS functional terminal and the ability to do that and send data at about 10 times more than they currently have on the system, that's what MUOS brings to the table. MUOS is very much cutting edge. It's, it's, a, it's a revolutionary program, whether it's uh, vehicles or ships or submarines, aircraft, or even soldiers dismounted, moving around. That's what this system is designed to do, and it's designed to bring them voice communications and data communication services, both point-to-point -point and through netted connections. Those capabilities did not exist with the previous programs. Uh, right now, with military uh, narrowband, you have to be sitting in place with an antenna up 
and pointed towards its allies. We'll be able to see the field move around on the battlefield and, and talk to people beyond line of sight while you're actually moving around. This is no small task. Three components must work together perfectly to ensure our troops receive the continuous mobile communication support they require in today's demanding environments. The on-orbit segment is connected to ground-based receiving stations that provide connectivity to the global information grid. The space segment consists of a constellation of four satellites in a spare, and it provides the um, tr communication transport for users, information between user terminals and between user terminals and that of the ground site. And it consists of a, um, a legacy UHF payload and also a wideband CDMA payload with significant increase in communication capabilities such as capacity, link availability, and mobility. So PMW-146 works closely with Lockheed Martin as the prime contractor for MUOS to deliver the system. Another key member of the team is General Dynamics, who is building the ground infrastructure that supports the Constellation. Our team works day in and day out with Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics. Lastly, and very importantly, the Boeing legacy payload, that provides legacy users uh, still the connectivity that they would have uh, on existing satellites as they transition onto the MUO satellites. The ground stations, strategically located around the world in Hawaii, Virginia, Australia, and the Mediterranean, are links between the satellites and user terminals allowing the MUO system to provide worldwide coverage. We have a a high-speed KA band link that comes from the satellite to the ground. The, the information is processed in terms of where it should be routed, who are you calling, what are you connecting to. So the ground is very important. All the ground stations are connected together and really the, the smarts of the system is in the ground. The advantage of that is that as things evolve and change, we can change it in the ground without requiring changes to the satellite. A manageable, effective user terminal working together with the space and ground segment is what enables narrowband. When fully operational, warfighters will be able to access the system via compact handheld units. It's no longer just simply making a telephone call over the satellite. I'm now having the ability to send warfighter data and calls back and forth to whoever I want them to anywhere in the world. As a matter of fact, technology uses a software-defined concept. And that's what DOD is moving towards. Software has no weight. You just need to have the memory space in your terminal to allow that, allow that uh, software to be stored. And that allows us to reduce the weight by, say, you know, 50 to 60 percent. With a wingspan of 92 feet and weighing in at over 15,000 pounds, EOS is many times larger than any current narrowband satellite. With unique physical features such as a 14-meter diameter mesh antenna reflector, the MUOS design is poised to revolutionize current military satellite communication. And it's a transformation in, in thinking about how to support a warfighter. The basic concept of MUOS is to take the cell tower, which in a cell system or along the highways and throughout the uh, uh, urban areas, and take those cell towers and move them to a geosynchronous uh, orbit. So our satellite is really the cell tower. PMW-146 not only provided the satellites, but also secured the launchers that carried the systems to orbit. Over the years, Navy satellites have been boosted by several launchers in the U.S. fleet, including Thor and the Space Shuttle. However, the majority has ridden into space atop Atlas rockets. Today, the Navy works with the Air Force to secure the launchers for the MUOS constellation. But again, the Navy will rely on Atlas for its ride to orbit. Getting to orbit will require the largest Atlas rocket in the United Launch Alliance fleet, with a 77-foot-long, 5-meter-wide payload fairing and the power of five strap-on solid rocket boosters. We're the first DOD mission to launch on an Atlas 551. The uh, five meter fairing part really is just due to the physical size of the uh, MUOS satellite itself, the, the volume, if you will, of the satellite. And then the extra solids come about because of the sheer mass that we have. And we have a very uh, high orbit in a geosynchronous orbit, as well as a very difficult uh, long coast to actually get us there. So it's a pretty complicated mission. Assuring current capability, developing next generation communication technology, launching the future. 
all in a day's work for the men and women of PMW 146. I do represent those guys out in the field that are uh, uh, doing the hard work and putting, you know, being at the tip of the spear. And so I think about that every day, being uh, one of the uniformed representatives in the program office. So we take a lot of pride in providing that capability and designing and building it. This is something that's critical. You see it in reports that come back from the field and, and the way that the the generals and the admirals talk about um, the needs in the field. It's critical for our warfighters. They have reliable communications whenever they need it, wherever they need it, to accomplish their mission.